how you doing? You know, I, it just dawned on me that I've never done a video on something that is so basic to every drummer that, I mean, it's the first lesson that you go over. I'm going to talk about stick grip. Now, there are lots of different type grips. One is a traditional grip where, unfortunately, I fall in exactly the opposite. Um, most people in the traditional side, right-handed drummers, actually took the stick. It actually gets placed in the webbing of your hand, like so. I'm doing this for the other camera, by the way. And you curl your fingers over. Now, most people don't realize why people did this in the first place. This grip really started long, long, long time ago in military drumming, as a matter of fact. If you've ever seen one of those fife and drum corps things, a guy holding the flag and they have a drummer and a guy with a fife, You've always seen a very long type snare drum. And that long type snare drum is what they used to use as a military based snare drum. And it was actually attached, okay? It was attached by a long strap. And the drum actually sat on an angle. And as they were walking, the drum would move back and forth. But more importantly, the drum was on an angle. And the reason why the drum grip, the traditional grip, started was because if you tried to do which is called a matched grip, which looks kind of like this, um, it would be very easy to play with your right hand. But trying to play on an angle made it look kind of like that. So rather than eliminate, to help eliminate the tension in the arm and stop looking like a bird, like you're ready to take off, they actually flipped the stick in their hand, made the arm come down, and they used kind of a rotating type pendulum motion. Now, the reason why I said that I'm exactly opposite that was because, as you know, I'm left-handed. And my teacher at the time was also left-handed. And I did learn traditional grip only backwards. So my traditional grip looked like this. My right hand is what people's left hands usually look like. And my left hand is what people's right hands usually look like. And I'm really not talking about matched grip either. Matched grip is where one's holding the stick in one hand simulates and mimics the stick in the other hand, completely matched. There are two different versions of that. There is the German grip where the actual grip is turned around where you can actually see your knuckles playing here, and you play thusly. Well, there is also what is called the French grip. And the French grip, a lot of people attribute the French grip to people who are playing timpani, kettle drums to all you non-drummers. Um, where the sticks, the hands are actually rolled over with the thumbs pointing basically straight up. And it's done mainly with the fingers. And the movement of the stick is generated by the finger action rather than just moving the wrists. But I want to get deeper than that first um, because this is going to have to do with a match grip, either German grip or French grip. 
And that is the actual position on the stick, on how you grip it, and how you really begin to hold it in the first place. I want you to make believe that you're holding on to a little bird, a sparrow as such. And you're holding the, the little sparrow in your hand. What happens if you hold the sparrow, the bird, too tight? You crush the bird. We don't want to crush the bird. Well, that's another story, and a sad one at that. But we don't want to hurt or injure the bird. What happens if you hold the bird too loosely? The bird flies away. So, first off, we have to get the right posture in your hand. And what you'll do is hold your hand thusly, upside down, and you'll gradually curl your fingers in, kind of like a little tube. And you are going to take the stick and drop the stick into your hand and with these two fingers, they are going to be your control point, the fulcrum, okay? Now, the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to talk about, you need the pad of the thumb to be in contact with the stick. Not over here, not over here, the pad of the thumb. And you're going to need the first joint of your finger right at the first curve is going to be where the stick is going to rest. And what you're going to find is that the stick is gripped thusly. And they're going to be opposite each other. You're going to put your pad of the stick, uh, the pad of your finger here where the stick is going to touch, but it's going to stop in the first joint and you're going to put the pad of your thumb so that it looks like that, all right, which is the basis for the French grip. But watch what happens if I were to try to play. The stick kind of goes not only this way, but this way and all over ways, and it's still kind of out of control. But by curling the fingers gently around like holding the bird, we're actually forming a slight tube, a chamber as such. And now that chamber is going to do a few things. That's going to let you actually move with the stick but it's also going to guide the stick so that you have some control. So if you were playing thusly, you're not getting any side to side motion. And if you were playing thusly, you're not getting any side to side motion, you're getting the up and down version. And that's what we're trying to do. But at the same time, these fingers are going to be your control point and these are kind of along for the ride, so to speak. And if you were to try to pull, I kid you not, if you were to try to pull the stick out of my hand right now, just like this, you would find out that it's sliding really, really easily simply because there's no tension supposed to go in the hand. The hand itself, what it, your two fingers are holding the stick, and these are kind of, if you can see, and one of the reasons why I wanted to use the side camera, the, the stick is kind of resting on the fingers, but it's not gripped tightly. If you grip tightly, not only will your muscles in your arms kind of lock up and you won't be able to get any speed, but you're going to find that you're going to kill the bounce that happens off the drum. And one of the things that we do want to use is the bounce. And the bounce itself is what's going to keep the momentum going. You know, I'm a firm believer that when you're playing, the last thing you should try to do is do so much work with your hands and your wrists that 
you stop the stick from actually bouncing itself. And when we play with this grip, just like what we are, you'll get this. Now, how am I getting that speed? I am getting that speed by letting the stick, when it comes in contact with the drum, bounce back. It's wanting to bounce, and I'm letting it bounce, and I'm going to hold it, albeit loosely, so that I'm still getting a bounce, but the actual bounce of the stick is not being inhibited by the other fingers. The other fingers are kind of like uh, a shock absorber in a car. Uh, I relate this story to my, my students and say, okay, in the olden days, cars had wheels and they were attached right to the axle. And for every bump that you hit, the actual car used to jump up and down. And it used to be a very bumpy ride. Well, they came up with something called a shock absorber, which is kind of like a tube with a spring in it that actually takes, and when a bump happens, and if it's attached to an axle, when a bump happens, the bump happens to the actual shock absorber, but not the axle on the car. The same thing happens when you're trying to work with the stick. The, your fingers here, down here, are actually, I'm gonna try to do this with watching the other camera, the stick is going to be bouncing here as I'm holding, but it's going to be vibrating and bouncing here. And by having it bounce, A, your hand doesn't have to work as much, and B, we start to feel how the stick is coming off the head and we react with it. And if you'll notice, when I'm doing this with these threes, I'm actually opening my hand up a little bit and then closing it down on the stopping of the bounce. My hand is not going. My fingers are reacting with my wrist. When you start to get them together, if you notice, you're barely seeing that my hands move. The motion is this, but I'm doing doubles by letting the stick bounce in my hand. That relaxed grip, without letting go here, without letting go here, that relaxed grip is what gives you speed and still be in control. And the singles that I'm doing, if you notice, I'm actually extending them kind of like in a partial French grip that we talked about before. All of the finger and wrist action has to work together. It's kind of like the cogs uh, in a machine where one cog is rolling and it's actually forcing it to do this. Your fingers and your wrists are working together. Now, when you're doing things slow, when I'm talking about the rudiments doing uh, things slow, I actually sit down and have them start and use the wrist for everything, use the correct grip, curling them gently around, letting them still be loose. But while we're doing it slow, I have them snap their wrists back as far as possible. this 
if you notice, I'm past where the actual wrists are starting to move. And I start using the wrist and the fingers combined. And that's what gives me the speed that I'm able to achieve. And I'm not really all that fast anymore, but you can see the relaxation is what needs to happen. Now, everybody said to me, why is it that your rolls are open and not closed? Those are two different types, types of rolls. I use a lot of my open military rolls that I learned in drum corps. Um, simply because I think if you can get the military rolls really fast and open, you've got a lot more control over how the stick works besides just crushing it down and letting the stick bounce by itself. So if you were able to sit through this entire segment, which I hope you were, this is the first lesson that I go over with every drum student, how to actually work the fingers and the wrists, the grip. I also go over the, the bird technique, the holding the bird technique to make sure it's loose. And I also go over, and this has been a confusing on a lot of, you know, for a lot of people, the actual where do you hold the stick? You know, I had a lot of students who grabbed their sticks too far up, which by that way, it actually hits you on the wrist, which I'm not trying to do. I actually f tell them to find the balance point of where a stick is, depending on where, how their finger works. Find the balance point, and then go about an inch or so behind the balance point so that you'll feel more weight on the end of the stick that's actually making contact with the drum. You know, that gives you the... I guess the momentum to do the, uh, you know, to actually have the stroke happen, um, that uh, energy that you're able to do lifted up front isn't so much, I've seen students hold them all the way back and it's really, uh, trying to attain that is really ridiculous. But usually there's, uh, depending on your hand, there's usually about an inch, couple of inches at the back end of the stick that uh, doesn't interfere with your wrist. That's usually where from the balance point, that's where we, uh, I tell them to try to, to actually sit the stick in their hand. That way they've got some force, you know, to actually play. And at the same time, it's not so much up here or back here that it takes too much effort to try to move. So thanks for watching. And if you have any comments about how this works or you want to, Find out more about stick technique. There are so many stick technique things up on the internet. Uh, the ones I suggest to look at besides myself, like I said, are the Roy Burns techniques because he's really got it down. Uh, this type of technique, you're going to find that it kind of mimics the same way. That's where I got the, uh, the bird kind of uh, metaphor. Um, but there are so many good ones. And let's face it, We've got to find something that fits you, that lets you understand how to get that bounce that you need. See you next time.